Hi guys, this is Miss Stafford, um, one of your librarians, and I just want to talk to you a little bit about technology and digital citizenship and um, how to get help with your laptop, just various things that you need to know that you might not know. First thing, just so you know, like I said, my name is Miss Stafford. We have another librarian. Her name is Miss Graham. Um, one of us is always in here and uh, just a little plug for the library. We love having you guys in here. We want you to come and visit us. We're open for lunch, so you can eat your lunch in here and play video games. Um, we're always getting new books. We have tens of thousands of books uh, for you guys. And so we just want to make sure you know that we want you guys in here at your space. So come and visit us sometime. We're, we are very, very easy to find. All right, so we're starting on the Pascal website. And the reason I'm starting you there is because really the Pascal website is your path to get anywhere that you, anywhere to get information. So it links to our library page. If you scroll down, it's got a full calendar on it. It's got all of the campus news where you would get announcements. Um, there is lots of information on this page. And so we wanna make sure you know how to get to it. It's really easy. It's just fwisd.org slash Pascal. So here's the page. In order to get to the library, all you do is you go right here and you click on library. When I do that, it's gonna take me to the library page. The library page has lots of great information on it as well. It's got the library catalog where you can find what books we have. You can always just come and ask us if you're looking for a book. Um, and if we don't have it, we can probably order it for you or get it from another campus. Um, it's got all the databases on it where you'll uh, do research. But what we're gonna do today is look at online resources. So when I click on online resources, it takes me to all of this information. Um, in fact, this presentation, once I'm done with it, will push out onto online resources and you will be able to find it there. That's, that's where you will have accessed it. And so everything that we want you to have, we're gonna put in online resources underneath student resources. So we've got lots of different things that you can use for um, creating presentations. Um, we have a subscription to the Star Telegram that you can um, get on and look at the news. So lots of great things. But today we're going to talk about digital citizenship. And so uh, this presentation is called Digging with Digsit. That's just a shortened way to say digital citizenship. And digital citizenship is just a fancy way to say be a regular nice human on the internet. So just like you'd be a regular nice human in real life, you should be one on the internet as well. So the first thing we, we're going to talk about is just laptop care. Um, you guys all have laptops. If you do not have a laptop, I'm going to tell you how you can get one because we want you all to have a device. It can be your own laptop or it can be ours. That is up to you. But we want everyone to have a device so you can be successful in class. And we want you to have a happy device. So a happy laptop is kept in its case. It's restarted once a day. You never use that power button to physically turn it off unless it's frozen. Um, and then you don't have any physical damage. A sad laptop, like you see right here, is one that has a cracked screen. So this laptop ha actually has a cracked screen. So if you open up your laptop and you find that it looks like it has an ink splatter on it, that is a cracked screen. It's cracked from the inside. Um, and that can happen for a couple of reasons. One, if you shut something in it. Two, if you put it into your backpack with a million other things and then just kind of squeeze it to death. Um, or if it's just, if it's dropped, if there's too much pressure applied. You've got to remember that these laptops are old and um, fragile. So think of them like a very old person. You have to be very, very careful with them. Um, and so we want you to remember that because we don't want you to have to come in with that cracked screen. Other things that we see a lot are broken battery clips. So make sure you're not taking your battery off um, by yourself. And then also um, we see just damage to the outside casing because it's dropped or something like that. Now, if the, there's just damage to the outside casing and it works, we're gonna have you keep that laptop um, because it still functions. But if it is hindering the function or the screen isn't working anymore, then we'll have you come in to get a new one. Make sure you're not leaving them out in the heat for long periods of time. They do not like heat. Um, not leaving them outside. And then also if you charge them, make sure you're charging them on a flat surface. So don't lay them on your bed and charge them for 15 hours because they're going to get so hot that we've actually seen one laptop melt. Um, and so then what that happens is it's called gross negligence and you could potentially end up paying for it. 
Okay. Now, when you bring in a sad laptop to us, we're going to swap it out for you because our main goal is for you to have a working laptop. And the first time we're going to tell you, you know what, it was a mistake. As long as it was not malicious, we're going to say it was a mistake. We'll give you a new one. Now, the second time we're going to start talking about how much you're going to have to pay for that. So it's just all about being very responsible and very careful. Um, remember, laptops love their cases. That's the first way to keep them from getting hurt. And then also you need to be restarting them. And you should be restarting by going down to this Windows key and then hitting this power button and then choosing restart. That is very, very important. Um, the reason that's important is because your laptops have to have updates and they will only get those updates if you restart. So once you start losing internet and your mouse starts bouncing all across the screen and things like that, then what's happening is you need updates. And um, so a lot of times people will sign up for help, they'll come in, we restart their computer and it works just fine. Okay, so that should be what you're doing first. And then after that, you'll submit and ask us for help. And I'm gonna tell you how to do that in just a minute. So one thing you need to keep in mind is that if you bring us a laptop with a cracked screen or um, what we call the blue screen of death, it's the blue screen that says, sorry, something went wrong, or a dim screen where your backlight is out, we are going to just swap you out and give you a new laptop. We aren't technicians and we can't do file recovery. So if you are not saving to a cloud drive and everything is saved on your laptop, you're gonna lose all of that important stuff. We don't want that for you. That is very frustrating. And so the best way to do that is to make sure you know how to access your my.fwisd portal. So let me show you this, it's really cool. If I go to my.fwisd.org, it's gonna ask me to sign in. Now you guys are gonna sign in with S and your ID number, and then whatever your password is that allows you to get into your computer or a district computer. Okay, my login is a little bit different, but let me log in so you can see what it looks like. If you log in and it asks you to set security questions, you need to do that before you get in. And the, the reason for that is so if you ever need to change your password, you can answer those security questions and change it even if you're not on campus, which is really cool because we haven't ever had the ability to do that before. Um, so make sure it's questions that you'll remember the answers to. So if your favorite food or your favorite movie change every day, don't pick those. Just pick something that you'll remember. All right, so I'm gonna log in. If you log in and it tells you your password is expired, just go ahead and create a new password. Sometimes that happens if you use a different device. So if you're not on a district device, you're not using your password as often. And so they'll need you to change it. All right, so these are my apps. Now my apps are gonna look a little bit different than yours because I am staff and not a student. You guys actually have some cooler stuff on there than I do. But what I really want you to see <clears throat> is how cool it is. So I'm logged in, I click on it's learning. It's gonna take me to this page. I hit login with a Fort Worth ISD account and done. It logs me in, I don't have to do anything else. And so this is so, so easy to use. The hardest part is that people just didn't know it existed. And so once you know, it is so easy and so user friendly. So if you've been trying to get into it's learning and it hasn't been working, or you've been trying to get into um, focus or achieve and it's not working, it's because you need to be going through this portal. So that is the first step to making your life so, so much easier. And the second step to making your life so much easier is knowing about your cloud storage. Because once you start saving to cloud storage, then what happens is even if your computer gets that blue screen of death or it quits working or it bursts into flames while you're working, you're not gonna lose what you're doing. So let me show you Office 365. Now Office 365 is your email, it is your my, my apps, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and click on Word and um, show you guys what that looks like. So when I click on my uh, Microsoft Word, I can open up this document and then I can get in and just start typing. So if I was gonna do a Word, open up a Word document on my, um, just on my own computer, what would happen is that 
it would have to be saved to either my desktop or my documents or whatever. Then if I need to print it, I'm going to have to, because you can't print from your laptops, I'm going to have to save it. I'm going to have to push it in the cloud drive. I'm going to have to email it to myself, all those things. And it's, it's so many extra steps. Whereas if I just open Word online, then what I can do is I can just get in and start typing and notice right up here at the top where it says saving, it will just auto save everything for me. That is the coolest thing. It's, it will make your life so much easier because then if my computer just dies right now, no big deal, it's saved. I can also share it with other people that I'm working with. Inevitably, you will do a group, a, a group project in some class and you will have to share and work with someone else. So if I share this with someone, I can just look their email up. So if I'm looking up Miss Graham, I can look her up and I can send this to her and then we can both work on that document together, which is really, really cool. And you can do that with people in, um, in your class or not in your class. You guys can be both at home working on that document. So that's your cloud storage through Microsoft. You have PowerPoint on there. You have so much stuff on here and it's it's really cool. I would suggest getting in and kind of exploring and then everything saves into your OneDrive. That's what your cloud storage is called and you can find it all there. So see, I've got all this stuff um, that I can then open and send to people and share with people. If you're not wanting to use Microsoft and your teacher is fine with you using Google, you also have a Google Drive. And so you click on it. If you've never been in it before, it's going to ask you <clears throat> to verify who you are. It's really just you click yes and say um, that's who you are. And then you've got your Google Drive. Then you can come up here to new and you can add Google Docs, Google Sheets. You can make a Google Slide. Miss uh, Graham and I use Google Slides all the time. We really, really love it. There's lots of cool things you can do on it. And even if your teacher says, hey, I really want you to create a PowerPoint, they prefer PowerPoint. Once you're done, you can download it as a PowerPoint and submit it. So you've got that option as well. And you also have the option to do the same thing share it invite somebody to work on it with you and then um, you guys can be working together no matter where you're at it does the same thing it auto saves and it saves into your drive it would just save right here so see there's that untitled presentation that I opened up so it's really really cool and so that's your cloud storage. So then what happens is if you need that and you don't have your laptop or your laptop is broken, you can access it from any computer. It doesn't even have to be on the school campus. You just go to my.fwisd.org, you uh, log in, and then you go into your Google Drive or your Office 365. So very easy and it will save you a lot of time and a lot of headaches. Um, so make sure that if you are trying to get into Achieve or into its learning or focus, which you should be checking quite often to make sure that your grades are good, then you want to go through my.fwisd.org. All right, so let's say you need help with your laptop and it happens. Things happen. We will never be mad at you for mistakes. We get it. But you also have to kind of work with us as well and understand that we are the librarians, but also we are doing tech help. And so we have to split it up into days we do library jobs and day we do, days we do tech jobs. So we do tech help on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Now, the first thing that you have to do is go to this website right here, bit.ly slash laptop help. When you go to that website, then it'll take you to this form and you can fill that out and then we'll call you down. So at no point do we need you to come down to tell us your laptop is broken. We need you to fill the form out and we will get you down as soon as we possibly can. We promise we don't like having you wait on that form just like you don't like waiting on it. So we try to get it done ASAP. So then you'll come down, we'll fix your problem and we'll send you on your way. If it's a problem that we can't fix, so for instance, Achieve 3000 is not something that we can fix. We don't even have a login for that. Um, and you sent, fill out the form and say, hey, I can't see my English class on my Achieve 3000. Then what we're gonna do is send you an email and say, hey, we can't fix this, but here's who can. So we will, you will always hear from us. You'll either get a pass from us or an email from us so that we can make sure we fix your problem. This is the form. So actually, in a minute, you can go into um, this presentation that I clicked on in online resources. You can click right here and the form is embedded. 
for you so that you don't even have to type the website in. So if you have a problem, go ahead and fill it out so we can get you called down. There are lots of options here. Um, obviously, if your laptop is broken or malfunctioning, the second one is if your laptop is lost or stolen. We want you to fill this form out the minute you think your laptop is lost or the minute you know it's stolen because you only have 10 days to report before you become financially responsible. And that is very, very, very important. And so we want you to let us know as soon as possible, fill that form out so that we have a timestamp showing that you reported it in a timely manner and then you don't have to pay for it, okay? Again, we're not gonna be mad at you. We just need to know so we can put the right steps in to make sure we can help you find it. The first thing you always wanna do if your laptop is lost is you want to speak to every one of your teachers because sometimes they'll find them and set them to the side and they don't know who it belongs to and then they get busy. And so um, you wanna ask them if possibly they've seen it. You can also fill this form out if you don't have a laptop. So if you don't have a device and you really, really want one, and really you need one, you either need to have your own device or our device, then we want you to fill this out so that we can help you figure out what you need to do to get a laptop. Okay, our main goal is for you to have a laptop and we can help you with that process. We just need you to come and tell us that you need help. All right, so that's the form. Make sure you're filling that out. Again, if we if you come in and you need help and we send you away because you haven't filled out the form, it is not because we don't love you. It is because we need to follow that process so that we can make sure we see everyone and that we have good data on um, the issues that we fixed. All right, so then the second part of this is called digital citizenship. And like I said, that is just being a good person on the internet, okay? And we know that you guys can, uh, can and have the potential to be good people all the time, face-to-face -face or on the internet but sometimes you just need a reminder. So digital citizenship is more than just plagiarism or things like that. It's about um, being responsible with money online, knowing and learning and teaching how to use technology, digital etiquette, that's that being a nice person, um, protecting your physical and psychological well-being, knowing digital law. It's all very, very important. But we always focus on the same thing. And the reason we do that is because every year on campus, we have at least one issue where somebody posts something on social media that they should not, and then they get in trouble for it. And so we want to just avoid that. Ms. Graham and I would like to have a time where we don't have to talk about that anymore. And we would love for you guys to be the first group that does not have an issue online. Okay, and so the way to do that is to remember that every single thing that you do online is public in some way. It doesn't matter where you post it or what you post it through. There is a way that somebody can access that and then share it with the rest of the world. And so do not put anything out onto the internet that you would not want everyone to see, all right? Um, these tweets are just examples of different universities who have dropped people from their teams or uh, pr prospective students and athletes because of things on their Twitter. Penn State does it, Duke does it, SMU, so just our neighbor across the road, um, they do this all the time where they, it, any sports recruit that they have, they look at their Twitter and if it's not something they wanna be associated with, they get rid of it and they don't give them an opportunity. And so it's really, really important for you guys to know that and to understand that um, because we don't want you to miss out on opportunities. So if you want to be recruited for a sport, if you want a scholarship, if you wanna to go to college, if you want a job, they're going to be looking at all of that information to make sure that you represent them in the best light possible. Okay, so remember that. The best thing that you can do is you can brand yourself as someone who is responsible, who is positive, who is hardworking. And if you are not doing that, then you are already behind everybody else who is. And so we want you to keep that in mind. This is a great video. I won't play it for you now, um, but you can go back into the presentation and watch it. And it is a video by a, a man named Odell. He's a motivational speaker. And basically he says the same thing. The things that really stand out to us are, if you are not actively promoting yourself through social media, if you are spending all of your time just talking to uh, 
friends that you might not even keep in contact with in real life, saying mean things, saying horrible things, posting things that you shouldn't, then you're behind everybody else. And you guys are at the age right now where you have so many opportunities to create a positive digital profile for yourself where people will see you and think that is somebody that I want to represent me and my brand. And so it's really, really important that you remember that, okay? All right, so the last thing that we want you to do is um, in the online resources, when you open up this presentation, if you scroll down to the bottom after you watch the video, then we want you to complete this quiz. If you put your ID number in and answer these three questions correctly, you'll be entered into a drawing to win a Kindle Fire, brand new Kindle, Kindle Fire with an SD card and a case. So a really cool opportunity for you guys um, to win something and just for listening to our presentation. So just to kind of recap, the way that you get to that is you go back to the online resource resources page, which you should already be at because that's where we linked you to get to this video. You click on Digsit presentation and then you can scroll down to the bottom and you can watch that video of Odell and you can answer um, this quiz and enter yourself into the drawing. Just a reminder, um, Ms. Graham and I are always here to help you if you guys have questions, if you have more questions about this presentation, or if you need help with your laptop. Remember, fill that form out, come and see us. We uh, just got a new shipment of books in, just to kind of add that in there as well. And we would love to see you guys for whatever help you need. Um, so come and find us. We're in the library in the front, very easy to find. All right, thanks guys, have a great day.